Hello guys, welcome back to Comic Book Cafe, and today we are reviewing Cyborg number one. So, uh, the whole point of the start of this issue of Cyborg is the fact that his powers are evolving. The problem is, his body are his powers. He's a cyborg, and uh, he doesn't know what's caused these changes. So, we start off this book, uh, before we get into anything, the writer is David Walker, and the artist is what, Ivan Reese and Jody Prado. By the way, I love the art of this book. Uh, great art in this book. So, we start this book off seeing a fight between what they call Techno Sapiens and Tech Breakers, as they call each other. So, we're assuming that's what they are, because that's what they call each other in the very beginning. And they had this fight. And so, they start fighting each other, uh, and then we cut uh, to Cyborg, and we see Detroit, and we see, uh, you know, protests outside Star Labs and uh, Cyborg shows up there and we see his dad and we see his dad talking but we also see inserts of Cyborg thinking how he knows his dad always loved him and stuff so you see his thoughts why his dad is doing his stuff so you see him and his dad his dad is kind of different his dad's kind of like you know always making a big deal because his son's there and he's you know he's not making such a big deal about it because he's like, what could be the big deal? So they show up where his son is. And they see he's changed, right? That his armor looks, he looks different. And, like, that's a, a change. And, you know, they ask what happened. And so he plays him all of it recorded. What happened. Basically that he had died. And then when he was dead, something happened. And he was revived. Somehow, his body, that cyborg, revived itself. Somehow did something. And so, you see, and what's interesting about this dynamic is you see his dad and, and his, his fellow scientists all looking at all the readings and all this other stuff, completely ignoring cyborg like he's invisible. And cyborg makes it, tells you a little bit about his past in this book, how his mom and dad always argued about him all the time. And how he's always felt invisible and how he hated feeling invisible. That sometimes you'd rather feel like a monster or where people hate you or pity you because at least then, you you know, they're paying attention to you. And the girl, I guess, you knew from childhood, Sarah, is the only one who seems to care about him as a person. And the, the girl's trying to put the needle on him to get blood. She can't. And he's trying to get his dad's attention and he can't. And so he gets mad and he, and he you know, shouts. And they look at him and they're like, holy cow. And he changes, like his body has changed. All these weapons are forming and stuff. And they're looking at him for, paying attention for a minute. And then they're going back to their stuff again. And so he just gets up and walks away and goes to find Sarah. Uh, and they're talking. You know, he said he came back to find out who he was. And his dad's not making it easier. Because he doesn't know, he doesn't know what's happening to him. Right? He's... You know, he's, I would imagine, doesn't know what's going on and scared at the same time. Because, again, you don't know what's happening. You've had major changes and you know what's caused this. Uh, so, him and Sarah decide to go out and leave. And they go walk through the protesters. And, of course, they're protesting. And you think, oh, they're protesting because he's a... He's a cyborg. Actually, no. The first protest that walks up to him is protesting because he's got a, a flimsy little, you know, two little grip thing you, can, you can't tie his shoes with. And cyborg's got this great, you know, big, fancy, you know, you know, like arm, full mechanical arm. And, you know, he's got, you know, red eyeball. And this guy doesn't even have, like, like have an eyeball uh, protest. And then, it, and then somebody in the crowd is somebody he, he, like, he knew from childhood, like, played against the Royal Football Team. And... Hey, let's go out. So they're all going. It's funny as the guy who protests the hand stuff eventually goes, are we still having a protest? Because the protest kind of died off after that point. And so they go off. And then we shoot back to the little war between the Techno Sapiens and the Tech Breakers. And the Tech Breakers get beat, lose and get beaten. And they have a blaster, which looks a lot like Cyborg's blaster. And the Techno Sapiens talk about how the, the technology can sing to them and how it sounds like perfection. And the, the leader, you know, takes that blaster to himself and they change the breakers somehow to B-52 
being part of them now or changing them into something else and creatures of, of being part of them. It looks like being part of them, but they're changed into something else. And they're like, this brings us hope. This brings us perfection. They're going to go find it where it came from. And the new, new next issue just says, uh, you know, Victor being hunted. So clearly they're going to find Victor. Uh, clearly they have some of the answers you guess to what's going on with him. Maybe they don't. Uh, a very intriguing first issue, to be honest, due to the fact you they start off with the techno sapiens and the the tech breakers, and you don't know who they are or what they're doing. They're just there. Well, you'll find out about them later, obviously, because obviously Cyborg what's going to have interactions with them, whether fighting or otherwise. Uh, you see his personal battles with like, you know, him and his father obviously don't have the best relationship, and. He, they show early on in the book how his dad had saved his life twice, but the third time he died, his dad wasn't around. So, like, his dad has always saved him when, when he was about to die. And his dad's who made him cyborg, if I didn't tell you that earlier, to save his life. So, uh, they don't have, like, the best relationship. Uh, his dad kind of sees him more dad than anything else, it seems like. He does care, obviously, but he doesn't. He cares more about, oh, what can you do with this stuff than, you know, him, it seems. And where he fits into, like, the world, like, where he fits into, the, he doesn't understand, seems like, as a character, they seem to show, he doesn't know what he is now, because of the changes, he doesn't know where he fits in, and he's kind of scared, because he does, okay, he's a cyborg, the stuff he has was created, but now, he's gone well beyond what they ever anticipated, and he doesn't know what he can and can't do, because clearly when he get mad at all the weapons and things, his body changed, he doesn't know what's going on with him and you see he wants to get his dad's approval or, or attention and he's never been able to do that either uh, so an interesting first issue a lot of interesting stuff going on I enjoyed this issue quite frankly uh, it was a nice launch of the book the way they set up for Cyborg and I, I definitely can't wait to check out uh, future issues of it so what do you guys think of Cyborg issue number one did you like it not like it uh, were you even a fan of Cyborg? Like maybe you liked him in Teen Titans or, or other things, Justice League or stuff like that he's been involved with in the past. And, and maybe you'll be interested in checking out this book. Again, this is, of course, uh, the new modern DC take on it, not the original take, obviously. There are ties, obviously, always kind of ties to the past, but not. But I enjoyed it. I liked the way this book was. I've never really truthfully taken Cyborg as a, when you're truthfully, and I know some people get mad, I never took him as a serious character in the DC Universe, uh, just because I never really read him that much. And, and uh, I actually liked this book a lot. It showed there's a lot of uh, depth to this character. And uh, that's all I got to say about it. Love to hear you guys' opinions. And again, if you never, you don't have to read any Justice League, you don't have to have read any Teen Titans to read this book. This book is just a fresh, clean slate. You don't need to know the past to know what's going on, because the book tells you everything together like what it happened to him before a re kind of quick recap and so you can just go into it reading it and going on from that point it'd be fine anyway thanks for reading, watching guys